one man, one really ugly woman, in an epic shootout. How will it end? Hi, so uh, I'm testing out three different USB microphones today because I'm in the market for one of these. Uh, the thing is I have very good microphones and uh, um, very expensive microphones as well, but uh, they are very impractical because usually you have to get out like your sound device and then an XLR cable and your microphone and uh, uh, some microphone stand of some sort and everything. So there's a lot of work involved involved, and then you have to uh, get it connected to, to your computer and record everything. So there's a much simpler way and fairly cheap way to do this. And uh, maybe there's more people out there who are looking at this and that's why I'm um, comparing these three microphones that I just ordered. Now up front, I'm uh, not affiliated with any of these companies. I didn't get anything for free and I'm not in getting paid to do any of this. So I just ordered these three and I'm trying to get them uh, as objectively as possible. And uh, well, I, I own actually microphones from all three of these companies and I'm very happy with them. So I hope I'm not biased in any way. Uh, these three microphones that I'm checking out are the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB. Um, they're all studio condenser microphones with USB. So there's just a sound device in there and you don't have to have anything extra, just a USB connector to your computer and everything should work, should work out fine. So there's the Audio-Technica. And then we have the uh, AKG Perception 120 USB. And the third is the fairly new Rode NT-USB. So uh, this is a microphone that's been out for two weeks or something. So I, I saw that and I thought, yeah, this is a good idea. I should try to order these and see what's best for me. Um, when it comes to uh, how they look, they're actually very similar. Um, the Rode is the, by far the biggest of the three. Uh, it has a pop filter attached to it, which is nice. But still, if you, uh, if you don't need that, it's still a lot bigger than the other two. Um, just to be fair, I mean, I'm using the Rode pop filter for this microphone, but to make it as even as possible, I'm using my own pop filter for the other two, so there's no uh, plosives from my voice that are uh, disturbing things. Yeah, okay. And then uh, this microphone here, the AKG Perception, has two small switches on it. One is to just uh, make a low cut for a rumbling noise or whatever you have, like there's, if, if you're breathing into the microphone or there's wind around or you're actually handling the microphone with your hands, uh, this is very nice because it uh, eliminates those noises to a degree. And uh, then there's a minus 20 dB cut switch, so you can make the microphone a little quieter if you have problems that the microphone is coming in too hot into your computer. Uh, these are the two things you can do here. There's virtually like there's there's no switch on the AKG you can uh, the audio technica you can just look at it and uh, see if it works or not there's nothing else you can do everything else i have to say can be done in the software part so you can open up your um, audio devices on your computer and then you can just turn down the volume or up the volume or whatever you want uh, the rode nt usb has two knobs to turn here and actually a headphone jack which is really nice because I mean usually when you're recording or oftentimes when you're recording you're doing voiceovers or you're recording um, a vocal part of a, of a piece and you really want some monitoring for that. So usually the monitoring with these other two microphones would be uh, with the internal sound card of the computer which A is not that great which is probably not that big of a deal if it's just for monitoring, but the other thing is that it has a, a lot of delay, so if you want really precise and on-time vocals, if you're recording a rap or something, it might be a good thing to uh, have this monitoring option here. And the two switches, the two potentiometers, are actually just to, uh, um, to level the audio between what's coming into the microphone, you have direct monitoring here, and what's coming out of the computer, which would be monitoring a band or whatever you have. And the other thing is just the volume of your headphones. So none of these three, which I think is a pity, have a switch to just turn the volume of the microphone up or down, the gain of the microphone. This can only be done in software. Not that big of a deal, not a deal breaker for me anyways, but uh, I thought you should know. Okay, so these three micro microphones I'm gonna compare, they all come with a small tripod stand, which is tiny and you can put on your desk. But for all three, I'm gonna use this fairly cheap 
uh, arm here, microphone arm, and I really recommend that you get one of these. It's very cheap. This one doesn't even have a name on it. It says made in China and nothing else. So uh, get one of these because you can get the mic much closer to your mouth without like bowing down or something, which is really bad for your voice. It's just, it's just much better to get it as close to your mouth as possible without having to move yourself. And this is really nice with this arm. I think it cost me 12 euros, something like that. All right, so uh, let's start with these three microphones. I'm gonna test three different things. One thing is uh, recording audio just for voiceovers, so this is normal speech like I do right now. And then I'm gonna try to do a uh, trailer voiceover, uh, which is getting really close to the microphone, uh, in case you're interested in that. And the third thing I'm, I'm gonna do is record me myself singing, which I don't know if you wanna hear that, but at least you can tell how the microphones work that way. All right. So uh, I'm gonna set one of these up and then start recording, right? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna record some singing now. The tune is Autumn Leaves. It's a jazz standard that uh, is very well known. This is not about sounding really great, so I'm gonna just do it in one take and not tin tinker with it in any way. So this is not gonna sound great. Uh, this is not the purpose of it. This is just for you to see how the microphone actually sounds like. Um, this is the uh, Rode NTG USB that I'm NT USB that I'm recording into. Those falling leaves pass by my window. The autumn leaves. Red and gold I see your lips The summer kisses The summer hands I used to hold Those fall So right now I'm trying to uh, mix my singing into the band that I <laughs> played in with my piano earlier. Um, and the three microphones are very different from each other, from what they do. And I had, I'm, I'm trying to adjust them. So usually when you're trying to adjust with an EQ, say this is the most important part to adapt your microphone to your uh, listening habits. And uh, with... Uh, in an EQ you would usually like maybe boost the very high and low frequencies a little but mostly you will try to take out some of the frequencies that are weird that just the microphone picks up that aren't really there or that just sound bad in the microphone so there are some frequencies that the microphone is not really good at and you try to uh, cut those out so usually you try to um, pull down certain frequencies and uh, I just did this and what I found is that for the road I only have to like pull down one frequency at like 550 Hertz that was a bit bad and uh, for the 
Audio Technica. I will pull down two frequencies, one just below 500 hertz and the other above 1000 hertz. Maybe that would be double, I don't know. But uh, I only pulled down those two just a little bit, like three decibels, and the rest sounded okay. I had to like cut out the low frequencies a little because uh, I don't like how that sounds. And uh, the third one, the uh, AKG Perception actually, I had to cut out at least four frequencies that I found really disturbing. Uh, the most prominent one, I would say, is at 1100 hertz, uh, which is kind of where the voice is positioned. And then, funnily enough, or well, that's to expect, there's multi multiples of that. So there's half, 540 hertz, 280 hertz, and 2200 hertz. And those four frequencies are all very uh, non-flattering to my voice when I record on the AKG Perception. I don't know if that's better for you, but um, for me, uh, this is really nothing to work with. If I have to pull out so many frequencies, the sound gets distorted to a degree, and I can't really fix that anymore properly. Um, okay, just um, update while mixing this. Okay, so this recording could be used as a voiceover. I am fairly far away from the microphone and I am just using uh, the audio as is. Now I put some EQ and compressor on the microphone to make it sound the way I would want it to in a YouTube video that I upload, say. Okay, I'm recording a voiceover on the Audio Technica 80 2020. Uh, this is the complete file as it is, as it came out of the microphone. And this is with some EQing and compressing how I would upload it to YouTube, for example. Okay, so I'm now recording a voiceover on the AKG, AKG Perception 120 USB. Uh, this is untreated with anything. This is how it came out of the microphone. And now I'm switching on an EQ and a compressor, how I would probably upload it to YouTube or something like that. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna record is an epic trailer voice. And the idea is that you get as close to the microphone as possible because these microphones all are cardioid pickup patterns. And uh, if you get really close to a microphone with that pickup pattern, it picks up more bass in your voice. So your voice sounds lower and more voluminous and more epic. Uh, that's what I'm going for right now. I'm not really good at that, so uh, <laughs> this is just me trying. And uh, you can also hear the near field, near field effect. That's what this is called of these three microphones. One man, one really ugly woman in an epic shootout. How will it end? Okay, so now that I've heard all these three microphones, um, I want to tell you, please listen to it and pick your own choice. This is, uh, uh, it's very important that you pick the one that you actually like. So I'm not going to tell you which one is the best microphone because there is no best microphone. Uh, it's all a matter of taste. So if you like a certain sound, you should go after that sound. Or if you're after a certain thing you want to do with a microphone, there's microphones that cater better to that than others. So uh, there's really no best microphone here, but I'm going to give you my opinion now anyways because I have one and I want to get it out because people always ask me what my opinion is if I do one of these videos. Um, the microphones really actually surprised me. They were exactly the opposite of what I expected from those companies. Uh, the first thing is that the AKG microphone, now I love AKG, right? They do great microphones. I have uh, several handheld condenser microphones for vocals. Um, and the, the C5 capsule is just brilliant. I love how it sounds. You can easily mix it into a band or whatever you want. Uh, it's a really great microphone. This one, however, really disappointed me. So uh, this sounded terrible. I don't know what it is. You can already tell that I, I had to do a lot of EQing to get it sound kind of what I wanted like. Uh, it may be better for your voice, so maybe you should try it out yourself but I really didn't like it. This is what I expected from the Audio Technica because it's the cheapest of the bunch. And uh, I did not expect this from AKG because they're very good at making vocal microphones. Uh, the next is the Audio Technica, which funnily sounded like I would have expected the Rode microphone to sound like. Uh, it's fairly clear. There's hardly any uh, background noise that you want to, oh, the background noise on the AKG is also a lot more than on the other two. 
So the uh, Audio Technica has hardly any background noise, which is really nice. And it has a very pronounced bass. So there's a lot of low frequencies rumbling around. If you want to have your voice sound a little deeper or a little more full, this might actually be, be a good microphone for you. No, I like my microphones to be as neutral as possible. And uh, I can always turn up the bass later because if there's a lot of bass frequencies with a lot of uh, uh, acoustic energy in them, they might overshadow one of the higher frequencies that I actually want to capture. So turning up the low frequencies in post-production is a way better way to do this if you want to do it. But if you don't want to do any post-production and just have a bass uh, bass heavy recording then this microphone is really nice and uh, Rode microphones usually sound like this like the one I'm recording into right now that's the Rode VideoMic Pro on top of my camera and uh, it oftentimes just sounds like uh, a lot of bass in there especially if you get closer to it um, then uh, the, the third microphone is the Rode microphone and well, yeah, it's the most expensive one, but if you uh, take the pop filter that you need to get extra into account, uh, these are basically in the same ballpark. I mean, they're very comparable in price. And the Rode microphone I love a lot. Uh, one thing is that it has uh, built-in um, monitoring. This is really nice for someone who's recording music, which I not do that often, but I may sometimes, so, <laughs> I mean, you've heard me sing before, so uh, I'm not gonna, gonna uh, do that a lot, but it's still nice to have the option. And the other thing is that it, it just sounds really, really neutral. Okay, so I was expecting from Rode to make microphones that have a very low noise, because Rode microphones in general have a very, very low noise level. They hardly, you can hardly hear any hiss or background noise that you want to get rid of in these microphones. Uh, but they usually have an overpronounced bass, which is, for my taste, not what I want. But this one, they really got it worked out. It's a really nice microphone. It's a studio microphone, so it's very neutral and it captures the voice really nice. I had to do hardly any EQing for it to, to work the way I wanted. And out of the box, just coming out of the microphone, it sounds really, really good. Um, in terms of levels, I have to say that the Audio Technica uh, comes out a little louder. And the AKG actually is a really, really loud microphone, so I had to turn that down a lot to get it recorded properly. Uh, but it doesn't matter as much. I mean, if the background noise is not that great, you can always turn down or up the gain. That's uh, inside the microphone. It's not a big thing for me. So I'm definitely going to keep the Rode microphone, and I'm going to use it. Uh, I have to add that just these microphones, all three, come with nice cables and uh, with the tripod stands and with a lot of equipment attached to it. So uh, this is not just bare like this. There's more to it if you don't have a long USB cable or something. I think the Rode, for example, comes with a six meter USB cable. This is uh, a lot. I wouldn't need that for my desk. Okay, so this is what I thought. Um, maybe it helps some people and if you have any more questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll try to reply to them as soon as possible. Thank you.